Hello everyone, and I hope that we're doing well. Today we'll be solving another question, um, preparing financial statements. We have the question here say, saying, the trial balance of W. Agnes, who runs a bookshop, has been prepared by her bookkeeper as at 30 June as follows. So we have the details of the trial balance here and our closing inventory. Inventory is at 30 June, which is our closing inventory. And we're required to prepare the income statement as well as statement of financial position. Um, so let's start with the income statements. So we can prepare income statements in two ways here. Is that we start, you know, step by step using our templates of, you know, our sales, cost of sales, our um, expense, operating profit and net profit, or we start using our trial balance. So picking it directly as it is here and placing them in the, in the right um, sections. Uh, in the first example, we had used, you know, the template of our income statement to prepare the trial balance. This time around, let's use uh, the trial balance. So items on the trial balance to prepare our income statement. Okay, so it starts with, it says capital. We know capital is a balance sheet item, so it's not coming to the income statement. We do not have to, you know, pick that. Um, sales, yes, sales is an income statement um, item, so we'll pick sales. Would highlight this. Stationary, yes, stationary is an expense. So we'll come here and put the stationary. We'll highlight stationary that has been taken. Okay. We have general expense. It's also an expense, so we have we copy the figure. And then we highlight this because this has been treated. We have a motto expense, it's also an expense. It's an indirect expense, so we're going to put that there. Cash at bank is a balance sheet item, so it's a statement of financial position item. It's a current asset, so we won't put that. Inventory as at 1st July 2014. This is both, yeah, um, this is our opening inventory. It's, it's, it's an income statement item. So we'll pick our opening inventory. Bring that here as our opening inventory. We'll have our figure here. Would we'll highlight that. Wages and salaries, indirect expense. Indirect expense. Rent and rates, indirect expense. So this shouldn't take us time. Office equipment is a balance um, financial position item. So it's a non-current asset. So we'll leave that. Purchases, yes, we need purchases here. We add our purchases. Purchase, we add purchases. So we have open stock, we add purchases. Purchases is 81. Bring that here. We highlight this as treated as well. Heating and lightning expense. So we'll bring that here. And we have that to be too much. Highlight this here. Rent received. Is other income, other income, other income. Trade receivable. Okay, we need to highlight this as well. Just to show. Trade receivables is a non is non um, is a current asset, so it's statement of financial position item. Um, drawings also statement of financial position item. Trade payables is a current liability statement of financial position item, motor vehicle is a non-current asset, interest received, other income, other income, and we have that to be this. So would I like this as well. Insurance expense. And then we have this. Okay, looks like maybe we have taken up all of the items for the income statement. Oh, we have our closing inventory. So here we have our closing inventory. 
8,100. But before I put that, let me just do a bit of, you know, explanation here uh, after we have picked in, you know, a lot of all of the income statement items. So we have our sales. Usually we didn't have returns here, but if we had return inwards, would have the daughter returning words, but we didn't have that. So we just leave that here as dash. So it means our sales remains this. Of our sales, no item was returned back to us. So let's go to our cost of sales. We start with our opening inventory, which is 7668. We add purchases. We also add carriage inwards. If we have carriage inwards in this question, we don't have carriage inwards. So we add carriage inwards. Inwards, we're supposed to add carriage inwards. We subtract returns, return outwards. So of the purchases we made, where there returns, we need to subtract those. But for this question, we don't have both returns inwards, um, return outwards or carriage inwards. We don't have those items on our trial balance. And then the next thing we want to do is we subtract our closing inventory. Closing inventory. And in this question, our closing inventory is this. So that was why I had paused at that time. So here we have our closing inventory. Is either we highlight it in red or we put it in bracket just to you know show that we're subtracting that bit of it. Okay, so um, we're going to highlight this also as being treated, even though we're still going to be using our closing inventory in our statement of financial position as well since it's a current asset. So let's add this together. OK, so we have here. Opening inventory 7668. Plus uh, 81753. 89421 and that gives us the cost of and if we subtract our you know um return outwards and all of that let's copy this that gives us cost of goods available for sale so actually we should have this here so this figure that we just got here is our cost of goods available for sale Here's our cost of goods available for sale. So we can call this cost of goods available for sale. And then we have that here. You subtract 8,100 from that. Subtract 8,100. And we have 81,321. So we copy that and copy that. And that is our cost of sales. So this is our cost of sales figure. So we we'll subtract our cost of sales figure from sales. So our gross profit is sales less cost of sales. So we we'll come back with our calculator. So we have sales is 119439. We take away cost of sales. It's 1321. And that gives us our gross profit. 38118 is our gross profit. Copy that. And here is our gross profit. So we have our gross profit there. Gross profit. Okay, so let's go to our expenses. We need to add up our expenses. We have 1,200. We have 2,745. We have 4,476. We have 9,492. We have 10,500. We have 2,208. And um, we have 3,444. And that gives us 34,065. So we copy that. That's our total expenses. That's our total expenses. So for us to get our operating profits, we take, you know, we deduct our total expense from our gross profits. 
that will give us our operating um our operating profit so we have our gross profit to be 38 118 we did dot 34065, which is our total expense. And we have 40053 as our operating profits. So that's our operating profits. That's our operating profits. Let's just make it about this. OK, so that's our operating profits. We add our other income to our operating profits to get our net um, profit or loss. So we have this. We add 2,139. We add 1,725. And hence, we have 7,917 as our net profit. So our net profit is that. So we see that this is very simple and easy to go. Um, so this is the end for our income statement. Um, our income statement, and we can see that our net profit, in this case, it's not a net loss. So we can take away our loss and just leave it as net profit is seven thousand nine hundred and seventy. In the next video, we'll prepare the statement of financial position and the statement of financial position the net profit will be an important figure for us i'll see you in that video